Hey guys, what's up? My name's Chopper, and I hope you guys are having a wonderful day. In this video, we're going to be going over the top 15 unbeatable gun setups in PUBG. Now, it's been pretty highly requested recently that we make a video talking about my favorite guns and then the attachments that you should run on those weapons to have an absolutely optimized setup. So we'll talk about why the weapons on this list are so good and specifically why you choose to run the attachments that you do. And it's going to help you get a really good grasp of some of the best weapons in this game and how you should be running. So if you guys enjoy the video, if you find this helpful, all I ask in return is to if you could spare a second to drop a like rating. The best part is it's free to do and it only takes a second of your time. And if you've not already hit that subscribe button and you're brand new around here, make sure to go ahead and do that as well. We're so close to 250,000 subscribers. I have something amazing planned for you guys and I can't wait for you to see it. But anyways, this list is gonna be 15 guns and their attachment setups that I believe to be absolutely unbeatable. And they're so dangerous if you can get it in your game. But if I missed anything on this list, if you think there's a weapon that should have been on here with its attachment selection, then let me know what that is down below in the comment section. But without further ado, let's get into these top 15 absolutely incredible weapon setup. Okay, starting it off here and coming in at the number 15 spot, guys, is going to be the SKS, and specifically for the attachment setup is going to be the suppressor or compensator using the light grip, which is very important, the extended mag, and of course the cheek pad. Now, I think when it comes down to it with DMRs, like, especially between the SKS and SLR, it's really personal preference at the end of the day, but I think that the SKS can potentially be better when it's fully kitted out, right? If you give me two DMRs and we're only talking scopes, I would probably pick the SLR SLR over this if uh, if it's not fully attached out. But the key here to the SKS becoming just like transcending the SLR basically is it's all in the grip. That's where the key is, right? And specifically the light grip and the vertical grip are far and away the best for this gun. The light grip is even preferred to the vertical because the light grip basically helps the first shot recoil to reset almost exactly where it is after you shot the first time. So in PUBG, if you didn't know, there's a mechanic where your first bullet is always going to have the most recoil. And so the light grip kind of negates that effect. And with the SKS, Getting that follow-up shot is absolutely necessary if you want to get kills with this weapon because it sometimes honestly doesn't do as high damage as you think, and so you do need to land multiple shots. But having the steadiness that the cheek pad gives you, the extra ammo that, of course, the extended is going to give you, and then the light grip being the absolute key factor to running this weapon properly, the SKS is honestly one of the most dangerous guns in the game when set up right. Now, if you're only at the situation where you have something like a thumb grip to use on the SKS, don't even bother with it. The thumb grip is awful for single tapping on most DMRs, and I would say just in general if you're not going to be full autoing the weapon, so stay away from that. All right, but moving on here and coming in at number 14 is going to be the barrel and specifically set up with a compensator, a vertical grip, an extended, and a, maybe a red dot or a hollow, depending on what your preference is. Now, when it comes to the grip on this weapon, I think this, kind of like the SKS, is one of the most important things, and I've really fallen in love with the barrel recently, and you guys have even made memes about it, like how I ditched the AK for this, and I mean, you're not wrong, but there's certainly good reason for it, right? It just has an unbelievable DPS, but the problem is it's a high skill weapon, right? Because the kick is incredible, and you need to be able to control this weapon if you're going to be effective with it. And I haven't really figured out if I prefer the vertical grip or the angled grip yet because the vertical grip is, is really good at providing just that raw and visceral like up kick that the weapon has, but the angle grip also makes it feel more consistent if you just pull down a little bit harder. The angle grip really softens up that horizontal spread, and I think that's so important for this barrel. So I think either one of these two grips will be good, but you definitely don't want to use a half grip, and I also wouldn't recommend a light grip, even though I do like the light grip on some ARs. The barrel is not one of them. And also, for whatever reason, the compensator seems to be crucial in running this weapon. And even, like, a flash hider might be preferable to a suppressor. For some reason, I haven't been able to put my finger on it, but a lot of people agree that the AKM and the barrel just don't do well with suppressors. Now, statistically, it doesn't really change anything as far as I can tell. But for some reason, many players report that the AKM and the barrel specifically just feel like really bad weapons when using the suppressor. So I recommend flash hider or compensator, and ideally comp is going to be your best bet. Alright, ladies and gentlemen, Coming in at number 13 is the G36C with a very specific attachment that I like for whatever reason, the half grip. Now, the thing about the half grip is I hardly ever recommend this as an attachment. And there's reasons for that. You do lose weapon steadiness, which is just one of the most like awful things about it, unfortunately. And because this weapon is naturally so steady anyways, it's like the benefits that you get from the half grip far outweigh the negatives that come with the, you know, penalty and weapon steadiness that with that comes with the half grip. Now, I also really like the vertical in the G36 and I, 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 you know, I think, I don't know if one's better than the other. I really prefer both of them. It's a great weapon for red dot spraying, and it's even fantastic as, like, a true AR DMR crossover if you want to put, like, a four or even six times on it. Like, it's insane. The compensator is a nice bonus on this weapon, but I really don't think it's necessary. I even think flash hiders or a suppressor are just as good on this. So, in that regard, you can run it however you like, but I strongly recommend it like this, and especially with that grip setup. Alright, coming in at number 12, I think I might be a little bit personally biased towards this one, but this is the M416 setup. Now, this is 
clearly like the most classic iconic one for me the compensator and vertical grip are the key to this one as well since the m4 doesn't have much horizontal recoil anyways i think it's really worth running the vertical just because you eliminate almost any kick that it has and this might be just one of those things that muscle memory is kicking in but i feel like i know this gun in and out this is the gun i easily have the most playtime with i far and away have the most kills with as well so it's not even a contest but the unsung hero with the m416 is in the tactical stock each weapon on this list has like the sauce right it's some kind of key factor that makes the weapon what it is and how, why it's so dangerous and for the m4 it's all these attachments for sure but it's definitely the stock because at the end of the day this takes it from a good weapon to being a good and consistent weapon and those are not at all the same thing a weapon can be nice like statistically but it's just not a very reliable kind of gun you know those ones that i'm talking about taking the number 11 spot is going to be the newcomer my boy the deagle and we've asked for this gun forever and it's finally here and ladies and gentlemen i'm happy to announce that this weapon broke new grounds at least for me and a lot of other players that i've seen this is the first time a pistol is being ran in a lot of people's class setups now while it's certainly not something you're going to carry around and use as like a replacement for a primary weapon it's definitely not that good but it's it's, it's definitely worth having as a sidearm and i kind of use it as like a pocket canine basically when you're able to get an extended a laser sight and more specifically a holographic sight which is i think the most important thing this can be like one of those weapons where if you tag somebody up and they get behind a tree you just need to land one more bullet while they're healing the deagle is amazing for that i'll be honest guys i'm just glad there's a pistol in the game now that i actually think is worth running coming in at our number 10 spot is a great crate weapon the groza now the unfortunately with this thing you guys know that the attachment situation with this is it cannot run a compensator which it could greatly benefit from and the whole like weird myth about running a suppressor on some of these 762 ars like the barrel for example it doesn't really seem to affect this weapon too much or at least in my opinion and what a lot of other players report it this is basically the only muzzle thing that you can run on this and it's really important that you do have the suppressor on this gun if you ask me because of how loud this weapon is the extended mag and the sights of course are givens like you obviously are going to want those but when it comes to the suppressor this is one of those things that some people like it without and some people like using but because of how like incredibly trackable this weapon sound is like you put a really big target on yourself every time you fire whether you realize it or not so the suppressor can at least cut down on the ability of other players in the game to track you just through weapon sound because if you don't have it with the suppressor it's it's so easy to identify it that's something to keep in mind and i would absolutely run it this way coming in at number nine is going to be the awm with a 15x scope or i guess an 8x scope it doesn't really matter either or the main thing you want to keep in mind about this weapon is that you have a high powered scope and then probably a suppressor or a flash hider now the thing is with the suppressor the reason why i like it on this gun is not because of the sound reduction that you get i really don't think that's super important for this weapon it's the flash hide that you receive it's weird because this gun is still kind of loud even with the suppressor so i'm not really like too concerned about trying to you know mask the sound of this weapon it's mostly just keeping yourself visually hidden and also i think it's worth knowing this is the only gun in the game that i think is an overkill with the 15x but basically any scope will do as long as you have the rest of this setup the extended mag is also i think pretty important for this weapon and when running it this way this one also turns into a very consistent weapon and it's already good so you got that covered number eight on this list guys is going to be the mp5 smg the vikendi exclusive which i still believe is the best smg in the game overall and the thing about this weapon is normally i have recommended the compensator to be run on pretty much all of these guns aside from the sniper rifles and stuff but the difference with the mp5 here is that it can take pretty much just as many attachments as something like the m4 and it's already a laser when you have these things on there like when it's fully attached out even with the stock and so you don't need the compensator because the 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 kick that it even has is next to none so the way that i see it is if you have even more than two hours on this game you know like anything about recoil control then the mp5 is probably the easiest gun to use in that regard and you might as well get the stealth benefits that you get with the suppressor because you don't actually need that extra recoil management that the comp is going to provide so in my opinion it's it's absolutely pointless to put that on but this is optimally the way that i would have to set up the mp5 coming in at number seven on this list is the canine and specifically with the attachments at least some kind of high powered scope a suppressor because of that not only the flash hider that it does give you and that visual suppression but also making this weapon quieter is very helpful as well but also the bullet loops are very important for this weapon generally speaking it's absolutely pointless to run either a sniper compensator or a cheek pad on bolt actions because you'll be holding your breath and rebolting between each shot so these two attachments are physically useless on something like a canine the way that you set up the weapon otherwise is pretty simple it's just a matter of knowing which attachments do what and why you should run them coming in at number six on this list guys is going to be the vector now i think between the rivalry of the ump and and the vector that it used to have in this game the the winner is pretty clear now ever since the switch now the ump 
is the UMP45, it's pretty bad. And even though technically the Vector is now shooting less powerful bullets, its overall viability has not changed at all. And I, and I think it's even maybe gotten better, in fact. And the thing is, with this weapon, ideally you want the vertical grip. That's where the sauce is for this weapon, or even a laser sight, potentially. The Vector cannot actually run a thumb grip or an angled grip, so it's important to realize why you're putting these attachments on and how you want to use it. If you want to be very up close in CQC combat, a laser sight might actually be better than a vertical grip if you're not going to be ADSing very much. This gun has been slowly but surely getting more popular again, and I think people are figuring out like the exact kind of setup that you want to have for this. And of course, the sauce for this weapon is not in the grip, but it's in the extended mag because of course you get way more bullets than you do just if you have it regular. So that's like absolutely crucial if you want to run this gun too. Coming in at number five is a fan favorite and a gun that's been here since the very beginning. And this is the Scar L. And I feel like for this weapon, it doesn't matter so much what you run as, as far as like on the muzzle, if you like the suppressor, the compensator, even the flash hider, whatever, whatever you personally prefer is, is pretty okay. But I think right here, the grip is what's important. And for me, it's the angled grip that I like the best. The big difference kind of simplified down between the Scar L and the M4 is the M4 is, is it shoots faster, but it's a bit harder to control. And the Scar L, it, it shoots a little slower, but it's way easier to control. And so the recoil with this is almost all vertical. And if you put the angled, you can really soften up that horizontal again, and it makes it very effective. The thing about this weapon is because it's so versatile, even something like the thumb grip, which I'm personally not the biggest fan of, uh, it, it can even work on the Scar L if you play it right. For this weapon alone, the way I rank the grips is, of course, the angled is going to be the best, I think. Then below that is going to be vertical. Below that, I think I'd give it to the light grip, and then under that is half grip, and then finally thumb grip. But anything can really be run and be effective if, if it's ran correctly. Okay, taking number four is going to be the MK47 Mutant. And, and while I don't think this gun is like a god tier, especially compared to a lot of the guns in the game, an update came out for it recently, which allowed you to attach the tactical stock to this weapon. And to be honest, that made all the difference in the world. It went from being literally one of the worst guns in the game, almost like single-handedly decided by the community, to at least something that's way more viable now. I think the way to optimally set this one up is a little bit complicated. I don't think that there's just one way to run this weapon because it's so viable. It can be used as a DMR, can be used as an up-close assault rifle. So I think the way to play it if you're going to be up-close is compensator and vertical grip are the two most important things there. If you're going to be like single tapping from farther away, a suppressor is pretty good. And then also a long range scope and a light grip is, is absolutely crucial. The thumb and angled grip are really, really bad for this weapon. So if all possible, try to avoid these if you're running the mutant. And of course the stock, just like for a lot of these weapons, is again the unsung hero for the mutant. And I think like it's not very popular, you know, due to it. It's relatively high skill gap with this weapon, but also it's it's just one of the most odd feeling guns in the game. And if you can, you know, land your shots and if you can get with it and understand it a bit more, like it, it might be a little bit more meta, but I think certainly for the time being, it's going to stay a very niche weapon. Okay, guys, winding down now on our list and coming in today at the number three spot is the Mini 14, one of my favorite DMRs in the game. And uh, the I think the proper way to run this as a weapon is to oddly enough, not exactly use it like a DMR, because when you, th when you think about using like something like a... Like like a DMR sniper rifle is the fact that you're going to be shooting like very kind of slow methodically and calculated but with the mini 14 you almost want to like it, it, as soon as you have a clear line of sight you almost kind of want to spam your shots because the damage of the mini 14 is kind of on the lower end compared to some of these weapons and the follow-up shots are very easy compared to the DMRs then it's almost obvious that this is how you want to play the weapon and I think the suppressor for the mini 14 and specifically the four times and six times are the best scopes to run on this gun I'm not sure what changed but the mini 14 has felt really rare in my games like I haven't been seeing it a lot so I don't know if they changed the spawn rate of it but I haven't been playing with it that much unfortunately taking the number two spawn on this list I've been really trying to figure out exactly what makes the AUG A3 so good and what's optimally ran on this weapon now compensator I've kind of ruled out is an absolute necessity for this one and for the grips I've also realized that the angled and then the vertical grip are the best ones to run on this weapon light grip if you need to but it seems like remember I was talking about earlier that the AUG has this weird thing with weapon steadiness that kind of makes the gun feel awkward the half grip makes that problem thousand times worse. So it's pretty much for the optimal setup on the AUG, I'd like anything with the grips and then the compensator is a necessity of course, but anything except the half grip. This kind of goes back to the thing we were talking about earlier about good versus consistent weapons. The AUG is always a good gun, even if you have nothing on it, but unfortunately it, running the half grip makes it feel less consistent and that's very important too. So it seems like you can run this gun any way you like to optimally speaking, even if you want to single tap it, just everything except the half grip is going to be what you want for the AUG. And that's that's kind of like an interesting find, in my opinion. Finally, guys, coming in at our number one spot today is going to be the setup for the Mark 14. And if you want to make this dangerous, of course, you can run it two ways, which is the most 
popular in the full auto with the red dot, or you can single tap it and use it like a traditional DMR. Now, some interesting finds, when I was trying to throw this weapon into the full auto mode and use it like that, because that's kind of like the highest skill ceiling for the Mark 14, is that the compensator in particular, and also the cheek pad are fundamental if you're going to be using it in full auto. Like, a suppressor is just not going to cut it, it's not enough, and the cheek pad is also crucial as well. If you're going to be regularly single firing it, then these two attachments aren't completely necessary, although they will continue to help you in that regard, but if you're going to be full autoing, and if you don't, if you're missing one of these two components, then just forget about it. When set up though in this very specific way, this is easily the most dangerous gun in the game, and it's so fascinating to me how some of these weapons change with attachments, and somehow, you know, some don't change so much, and then some are a night and day difference. I, like, that's probably one of the most fun things about PUBG to me, is learning all this kind of stuff and continuing to change. But that is going to be my list of 15 unbeatable gun setups in PUBG and their attachment setups as well. Let me know you guys think about this list in the comment section down below. If I missed any guns and then there's, you know, coordinating attachments, let me know what those are down below as well. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to leave a like rating. Subscribe if you are brand new, of course, before you go. Make sure you check out the description and go subscribe to my second channel if you haven't already. If you're a supporter on here, we just hit 10,000 subs and I'm going to be uploading a lot more content there. So go subscribe there as well. But anyways, guys, thank you for watching again and I'll see you all on the next stream or the next video. Take it easy and peace out.